training camp for this fight. How's it gone? Oh, very lovely in uh, the training camp. Every fight I win, I train hard. So it's like, it gets harder and harder. You know, I never thought it would be that way. So I'm working towards everything, you know. You're fighting a guy late in class. He's, uh, he comes from a boxing family. Doesn't have the amateur background. So do you, I guess. You, 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 all your brothers also box as well. Yes, yes, um, yes. Uh, he, he didn't have the amateur career you had. Um, what do you make of him as a, as a boxer? You know that he has a heart for boxing, you know. It's not really easy to step into the ring without an amateur record, not knowing how you're going to do. But I'm proud for him, you know. He's, he has a heart for that, you know. Not a lot of boxers do that. So I think it's in his bloodline, you know. So I'll give him that one. <laughs> Going back, okay, so he, he's running a, a two-fight uh, win streak. You undefeated so far in your career. How do you look into that? Have you looked into some of his previous fights? I was by his last fight. Yeah. Yes, I was by his last fight and he stopped the opponent. No, it's, I don't look at it as much as a challenge. But you never know what fights bring up, you know. Everybody goes out and train. So, yeah, we will see when the night comes on. One, one question I asked him uh, was, obviously you have two mutual, you have a mutual opponent in the Honorable Lubisi. Oh, yes, he yes. debuted against Lubisi. He, he, got, he lost against Lubisi. Uh, you beat Lubisi in uh, devastating fashion, first round knockout. How did you feel about that? Like, uh, like he said, he said apparently he, he's different and then they're the him back then and the him right now. But for what I would say, you're only as good as your last fight, you know. So for me, I, I, I give myself that one, you know what I'm saying. So there's nothing much to say, but for him personally, you can only be as good as your last fight. There was a press conference that, we, that was done at the Smith's Gym and then he reiterated it in the interview that he did with me on SA Boxing Talk, which was that he has a um, heart bigger than his body and he's going to come to fight and he's going to give you the fight of your life. What do you make of it when you hear comments like that coming from him? That definitely must make sure that his, his heart is bigger than his body, but can his body handle the, 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 the heat, or the punches that's going to be coming towards it, you know. It's two different things. You might have a heart for boxing. But can the body handle the boxing type of thing, you know? So when I heard that, when he said that, I was like, okay, that's nice. I'll definitely try, basically, go for his body to see how his body handles it, like I did for Anel Dubisi. And that will tell if he still has the heart for it or not, you know what I'm saying? You, in your, in your last fight, you were perhaps still carrying an injury um, yes. from, a, from a car accident that you got in. Yeah. Um, how's the body feeling now? I'm, I'm, Healed now, you know, I feel, I feel strong. Anton always says, you can see that everything is now gone, everything is solid. I'm back like I started, you know, like I'm hungry for this, I'm thirsty for this. And like my last fight, I wasn't really into the fight. I was nervous and everything. But for now that, you know, I'm back, I thank God every night to say, you know what, I've got everything back. I could have lost it and I'm taking it. And there's a lot of people that want this opportunity. So there's no way I'm just giving this opportunity away to anybody, you know what I'm saying? So while I have, it, while I have the opportunity, I'm going to make the best out of it. That's definitely what I'm going to do the whole rest of my boxing career. This is the biggest part of your career uh, for yourself and Leighton. Also mentioned it in his interview, the fact that this is the most experienced guy you would have fought at professional ranks and this is the most experienced guy he would have fought at professional ranks. Gating title on the line as well. Um, how do you feel about going into 10 rounds? Yeah, you know, I never went 10 rounds and, you know, it was going to come sometime, somewhere. And uh, I'm taking it, you know. I'm not sure if I'm going to complete the 10 rounds, but if I do it, I'll be happy for the experience. And if I don't, you know what I'm saying, someone else will give me the opportunity to go full 10, 12 rounds. It's just in which angle it comes from, you know. And for this title, you know, I'm gonna, I want to definitely take this title home because four days after that is going to be my birthday and I'd like to celebrate my birthday with a title or knowing that I'm a Gauteng champ, at least I did something before I turned 21. I'm, I'm assuming by the way you're talking that you, that you don't foresee this fight going the distance, you're looking to stop him at some point before the 10 rounds, even though you, you'll be fully fit to go 10 rounds if, if the case may be. It sounds like from the, way, from the way you're talking that you don't think it's going to go that way. Uh, definitely. I don't think it's going to go that way. But if it does go that way, you know, it's God's will, you know what I'm saying. But 
from my point of view, I don't want it to go that way. What's your, what's your motivation? What, what, what gets you up in the morning? What, makes you want, what made you want to be a professional boxer? Um, obviously, a lot of amateur boxers sometimes don't actually choose to become professional boxers. Yes, yes. What yes. made you, what, what, what motivated you to, to do so? You know, it's, it's another level, you know. Not a lot of people have this opportunity. A lot of people might have the opportunity to be a professional, but are scared of such, such, such an injuries and stuff. But some point somewhere, we are all going to die, you understand? So I always wake up thinking, what's the use living the world? And you never did anything that made you happy. And since I've been boxing, I felt this is something I love doing. It, it creates me, man. It makes me who I am. It gives me discipline. It makes me control myself out there. So I want to know when I, wanna leave, when I leave the background of what I've done, the children can look and say, you know, this guy came from this and he did this with it, you know? Not just did it in amateur and left it there and get questions like, this guy was good in amateurs and when they ask what happened, I'm a professional, you know? I know sometimes it's true that you might be good here and you might not be good there, but it's all about the effort you've been putting here and the effort you're gonna be putting there, you know? So I wake up to definitely say, you know what, I'm, I wanna make sure when people look at me and say that this guy was a delicate boxer. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about boxing, we're talking about Ricardo Malajika, definitely. That's what I want to bring out there as a face for myself and for my family to know they had a champ once. You know what I'm saying? Brilliant. Um, of course, now you, you're going to a place that is almost, well, we can call it like a home stadium for you. Emperor's Palace is your home ground. It's where you fight. It's your, he's coming into your territory, so to speak. Now, I know at the end of the day, no matter where you are, you're going you're gonna to win the fight and you're going to want to and you're going to train to win the fight. But Emperor's Palace is another place where if a boxer is sometimes not, not used to it, they can crumble under the pressure. Do you think that you have an advantage being that you fought there on multiple occasions? Uh, like you said, it's my own ground. Um, I won't be say I'm used to it though, but you know, the pressure gets... Once you enter Empress Palace, it's another different story, you know what I'm saying? So, from my point of view, like you're asking, I wouldn't say I'm used to it, but I would say that I'm getting used to it, you know, I'm getting there. And for my opponent, it's, he's been there for his cousin, so you know what I'm saying, he's been seeing his cousin. I think that's what motivated him one day, and maybe this was his dream to fight where his cousin fought, you know, it's like a family type of thing. So he'll be very happy, he will really give it his all to, to give, you know, to say I'm, I'm being where my cousin's been, I've been, in, I've been yeah. at Empress Palace, so I'm going to make the best out of it, you get what I'm saying? He wouldn't want to let his cousin down or his family down, because his cousins never let them down again. Okay? So it's, the pressure is too much on him compared to me, but it's my territory. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Something that. In saying all this, your prediction for the fight? My prediction for the fight is, yeah, I let the best man win. And I'm definitely not losing, so I'm taking the win. And then just lastly, if you look into the camera, give Leighton a message before you guys get in the ring. I heard he said he's going to stop me and I hope he's the man of his word because I'm a man of my word. Definitely going to be a stoppage.